Hello there. We're going to look at a function within pivot tables, Excel pivot tables called get pivot data. And this is great where you need to kind of create a custom layout or custom format for your pivot data. Now, here's my base data, my revenue. I've got lots and lots of rows of data here. That's 16,000 rows of data. I've already pivoted it. Because there's so much data, it's kind of a bit of a mess here. I could rearrange it to make it more readable. But essentially, I need to lay out the data like this. This is the way, this is the way that my customer requires my data to be laid out, or maybe it's a boss or another department wants the layout. More simplified, but like this. So I've got the year, I've got the customer type, I've got the products, I've got the years of the sales. I've put a little, few little formulas in here that will add up these figures as I get the data from the pivot table. Now the way to use get pivot data is basically just to make sure initially click on my analyze tab here that the generate get pivot data option is ticked here in my options menu. If that's not ticked, this whole exercise is just not going to work for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit equals, go to my pivot sheet, and I'm just going to click in any cell. It doesn't matter which cell I click in in my pivot table. Um, all I want to do is click on one of these calculated values and it will generate this get pivot data formula for me straight away. Now that actually doesn't relate to this intersection of categories here at all, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to have to um, redevelop this formula to fit my table. Now if we just look at the anatomy of this formula, we can see that there are quite a few little arguments in here. So data field is the field that we're doing the calculation on. So that's our revenue field. The pivot table um, is specified by just clicking in the top left cell within your pivot table. So it's on the pivot table sheet and the pivot table began in A3. Then you've got a series of pairs, pairs of arguments. You've got a field and you've got an item. So in the date field we're specifying one, so that's January. In the product group field, we're specifying books. In the customer type field, we're specifying account holder. In the years field, we're specifying 2010. Now, all that just came uh, from clicking on that one cell, which was looking at that calculation. But what we need to do is make this, these pairs of fields and items work for our table. So, starting here with date, we delete the one. That's not what we need. We need to specify that we are looking at figures for January. Now we'll need to make it a mixed cell reference. I'm pressing F4 twice here, which would fix the row. Product group, we're looking at books. So I'm just going to delete books. And I'm specifying that it's in A3. Now A3, I will need to fix the column part because products are always in column A. Customer type, well, that is not account holder, that's going to be web. Now I'm going to make that an absolute reference. And then the year, I want it to refer to the value that I have in A1, which will also be an absolute reference. So there we are, I've just reconfigured my formula there. If I click on the tick, it brings over the correct value. I can drag across, I can drag down, and it'll do all the calculations for me, all pulled from this pivot data. Now, obviously, then I could just copy and slightly adjust the formula for each of these little tables, but it would be exactly the same process, just going through and reconfiguring this formula for the table that you want the values to appear in. And then, obviously, if you change the values in your pivot table, your sales summary will update when you refresh your pivot table.